Hello folks, welcome to a Final Fantasy XII tutorial and this one is going to be all about quickenings, a very powerful feature in the game and if you're new to the game or you just haven't really dabbled with quickenings before then hopefully this video will help you on your way. Quickenings as I say are very very powerful, you're going to be using them a lot on bosses and some of the game's tougher hunts so it's a good idea to get to know how to use them quite early on and then you'll be a dap hand going forward. I did make a video tutorial on quickenings in the past but I wasn't really happy with it, a lot of people were still confused so we'll put in a bit of time uh, on this occasion to try and make sure that you guys have all the information you're going to need. Now if you haven't actually used the quickening feature or if you have then the two ways you can use this video are, first of all, you can watch it from start to finish. And if you're new, I recommend you do that. But if you have some kind of semblance of an idea as to how to use quickenings, but there's just a few things that you would like to know, then please check out the timestamps on the screen here. And then just skip ahead to whichever topic you want to see in more detail. But I hope you enjoy the video, guys. If it helps you, please don't forget to leave a like. And let's get started with today's episode. First of all then, what exactly are Quickenings? Well, Quickening is basically a special attack, and if you've played the Final Fantasy franchise before, then hopefully you're familiar with these kind of special attacks. For example, in Final Fantasy VI, you had the Desperation abilities. In Final Fantasy VII and VIII, you had the Limit Breaks. Final Fantasy IX gave you the Trance system, and Final Fantasy X gave us the Overdrive system. And Final Fantasy XII continues that tradition with the Quickening gameplay feature. This is a means of unleashing a powerful attack in combat though because it's so powerful you don't always have the option and means to actually use this ability and we'll talk about how and when you can do so as we go through this video it's quite a fun feature to use and uh, as with some of the other previous final fantasy uh, special gameplay mechanics you will also have to have a little bit of skill and good timing and rng involved to pull off some of the most powerful attacks now before we can go ahead and use a quickening chain in battle, we first have to unlock the feature. And this basically becomes available as soon as you have access to selecting a character's job and have enough license points to earn their first level of quickening. So for the sake of this example, I've gone ahead and learned two jobs on farm, Knight and Black Mage. And what we're going to do first of all is just briefly introduce how the quickenings work on the board. So basically, a quickening ability can be noted by the fact that its icon is this red orangey hue circular thing here next to LP, which you can see at the bottom of the screen there. And there are going to be four quickening nodes on every license board, and they are appropriate to each of the party members. So as you can see, Red Spiral here is the name of Varn's level 1 ability, quickening ability. And that is going to be the ability that's noted on all four of the nodes here. So the one up here for 75 license points would also teach Varn his level 1 ability of Red Spiral. Over here we have his uh, 100 license point node, which would also teach his level 1 ability Red Spiral. And then finally we have the fourth node for 125 license points, also teaching Red Spiral. Now whichever of those four nodes we use to unlock Varn's level 1 Red Spiral ability, the other three will then automatically change into his level uh, two quickening ability. So if we go ahead here and just learn enough uh, licenses to give us the 50.1. Again, doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be any of the other three, but it just happens to be the closest to where I am on the board. So it's the one I'm going to choose. Then we'll go ahead and learn Red Spiral for 50 points. And the other abilities will now have changed to his level two. In this case, White Wool. So White Wool will now be available to select on the other three that we haven't learned yet nodes. Now, since each character only has three quickening abilities and there are four nodes on each license board, what happens to the fourth node once you've learned three abilities? Well, it disappears from the board altogether, which means you need to pay attention to which of the three nodes you choose from because the fourth, as I say, will disappear. And if that node is required to learn in order to access other abilities then you're going to be locked out of those abilities so on the night board for example the three out of the four ability uh, three out of four quickening nodes do not lock you out of other abilities so it doesn't really matter if you choose them but if you don't choose the fourth on the night board you will be locked out of these abilities down here in particular 390 health 
So we are almost certainly going to want to use this particular node uh, in order to give Varn one of his abilities so that we don't lose out on these three down here. Now, don't forget, you do have two license boards on each party member, so you will need to pay attention to that so that you don't mess up on learning your quickenings. So, for example, we've just learned this ability, the level 1 ability, on the 50 license point node on Knight. So, if we head over to Black Mage to see the equivalent, we can see that that was an okay one to choose because it now gives us access to the 70 health ability. Okay, so if we hadn't selected the 50 license point cost nose, uh, and that was the one we let disappear, then we'd lose out on earning the 70 health node here, because there'd just be a gap there, we wouldn't be able to get to it. Now if we go over here, we can see that White Whirl on the Black Mage, uh, sorry not White Whirl, the 125 license point uh, quickening, doesn't have to be White Whirl, that's just because we've learned Red Spiral already, gives us access to the 390 health node. So we pretty much want to do that. Uh, what have we got down here? White Whirl for 75 points. Doesn't give us access to anything, so it doesn't matter whether we learn one of Barnes Quickenings on this node. Let's check on the Knight board at the 75 cost node, which is over here. And again, it doesn't give us access to anything. So we can safely ignore the 75 cost uh, Quickening for Varm and learn the other two. So in this case, we can go for the 100 points and the 125 points. And we already know the 125.1 uh, does give us access to other abilities on both boards. So we definitely want to learn this one. And the 100 point li license points quickening uh, possibly does as well. Actually, nothing was locked behind it anyway. So it didn't really make any difference between that or the 75 cost one. So as you can see, I've now unlocked two of Vaughn's abilities. The Red Spiral and the White Whirl, and we just need to unlock his level 3 ability now, which is called Pyroclasm, and we're definitely going to be unlocking it on the node that gives us access to those extra abilities, so either on this one, uh, or on this one, but either way, whichever board we unlock it on, it will give us access to all of those extra abilities down there on both boards. Okay, so I'll go ahead and learn enough points to do that, but before I do, let's just talk about mischarges, because basically, you can now see that Varn has that orange bar, under his name which the other characters don't have that is a mischarge and you learn a mischarge every time you learn a missed ability so a new quickening ability that you learn on the license board will give you access to a mischarge and that will now give Varn access to actually casting uh, the quickening ability okay so we can go ahead and select Red Spiral. The reason why you can't cast White World is just because that mischarge is empty but you can replenish it with items uh, but basically, I could start a quickening chain now by selecting Red Spiral. Now, as your other party members unlock their quickenings on the license boards, they too will achieve mischarges. And eventually, everybody in your party will have three mischarges, as you can see here. Now, every party member can be used in a quickening combo, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. The best way when you're starting a quickening chain is to endeavour to max out the amount of numbers that you can get in the chain okay so to get the chain as high as possible which means you're always going to want to try and stick to your lower level quickenings for maximum amount of damage overall which might sound strange but all the theory crafters have generally worked out that's the best way to do things you're better to go for a higher number of quickenings in a chain of lower levels than a lower number of quickenings in a chain of higher levels if that makes sense so here we've got an unsuspected volunteer of our quickening onslaught so we're going to go ahead select Varn go down to our mist ability head down to quickening and choose red spiral once again because that's only going to use one mist charge it is weak is quickening and gives us the opportunity to maximize the chain so if we go for pyroclasm then of course that's going to use all three of his mist charges and it's going to be hard to build up a lengthy chain now we probably will be doing level threes in the chain but only when we have to okay so unless you're going for certain concurrencies which I'll talk about later for trophies then just stick to this particular method to maximize the amount of damage that you can do so we'll go ahead and select red spiral here and this will unleash the beginning of the quickening chain for us and pausing the video for a moment let's just have a look at the screen to see what's going on 
Well, you can see that straight away, Varn has Pyroclasm as the next option in the chain, which is three mischarges, and it's greyed out because Varn only has two mischarges. How do I know that Varn only has two mischarges? I know because we've just selected his red spiral ability which costs one, leaving him with two. Now unfortunately there's nothing telling us going forward exactly how many charges each party member has left. We basically just have to kind of guess in our heads and um, based on the fact as to whether they can actually cast abilities or not. But seeing as how I told you we're always going to be going for the cheapest ability, the cheapest quickening, then that shouldn't matter too much anyway. So you can see we've also got Fran who has Whip Kick available, and it's random which option we're going to get here for two mischarges, and Ash also has Maelstrom's Bolt available, which is her level three quickening for three mischarges. And underneath those choices, you can see the remaining time that we have, which is in seconds, four seconds, which is what we start with, to basically get a bigger chain as possible. So we need to make a choice here between Fran or Ash, or we could shuffle, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So since Fran's ability is two mischarges, we're going to select that one, since that will still give us a potential opportunity to do a level one mischarge for her, since you'll have that amount of mischarges left if that option comes up. So we'll go ahead and select Fran to continue the chain here. Now you'll notice the timer has gone away. It only appears when the actual selections are being made. And if we just pause the video again, you can see that Varn still is offering Pyroclasm, so we've got no chance of being able to cast that. Uh, Fran, this time, has Feral Strike, which is her level 1 ability. Now, because we chose her level 2 ability, she still has that one mischarge left. We can actually go ahead and continue the chain without having to worry about selecting Ashi's level 2 ability. Which means right now, I've already worked out in my head that Fran currently has one mischarge left, and Ash still has three. So we're going to go ahead, select Fran's Feral Strike ability, which will deplete all of her mischarges because she only has one left. And then we'll have Ash left with all three of her mischarges. So whatever happens on the next selection, we will definitely be able to select something for Ash. Now our next choice that pops up then is for Ash to cast the Nord Swain's Glow uh, Quickening, which is only one mischarge. And seeing as how Ash has three mischarges, we know that that's not going to be a problem. Now, Varn can't cast his level three since he only has two charges remaining. Remember, he's only cast Red Spiral so far for one, and Fran has depleted her mischarges altogether. So we'll go ahead and select Ash's Nord Swain's Glow ability to continue the chain. So once more the game isn't telling us right now how many charges each party member has left, the cost that you're seeing on the side is basically how much they would need to select that ability. But I'm just working out in my head as we go. So we know that Varn has two mischarges left since he's only cast Red Spiral for one. And we know that Ash only has Heaven's Wrath, uh, so he only has two mischarges left having cast Nord Wayne's Glow for one. So we can select either of those. It doesn't really matter which one we go ahead and choose here. So let's select White World for Varn. And that will then completely deplete his mischarges so that only Ash has any left. So as you can imagine, we are going to be running out of options soon. But it's not over yet. So we'll go ahead and select Heaven's Wrath for Ash. Depleting her final two mischarges. Which means no character now has any mischarges left. Now, if you think that's the end of the chain, good news. It doesn't have to be. Let's see. Now occasionally, instead of a quickening ability, you might see this option for mischarge. And if you see this option for mischarge, you really should prioritize it. What this is going to do is give that party member all three of their mischarges back so the chain can continue. So you can see here that Fran has the option for mischarge. We can go ahead and select that and all three of her charges will be repleted. And you can see immediately then it reshuffles the options. So as soon as you select mischarge, be prepared to select a new quickening ability. So we was able to select whip kick for Fran, which is her level two ability. And so now she has one more mischarge remaining. We're going to continue on with this. So we've replenished Varn's mischarges there. We've just selected Red Spiral after they reshuffled. And now he has two mischarges left. So both him and Fran have some mischarges. And Ash has completely depleted. 
So we'll just basically hope for more mischarges. There we go, one for Ash. Uh, we did go ahead and select her level 3 ability then. That might not have been the most appropriate thing to do, but because we're running out of time, I'm having to make decisions quickly. Now you can see then, and if you have absolutely no option to choose, if everything is grey, and only when everything is grey, you'll want to hit the shuffle command. Now on PS4, that's the R2 button. On the Switch, it's the ZR button. I'm not sure what it is on Xbox, but it's one of the it's the top right shoulder button. And just tap that button, and then it'll reshuffle the options, and just keep tapping it until something comes up that you can select. And just repeat this process over and over, getting the chain as high as you are possibly able. And eventually, once you completely run out of time, you'll initiate a concurrence. Now, you don't have to do anything during the concurrence. All that you need to know is that the concurrence you're going to see at the end of the chain is determined by how many of the various levels of quickenings you've activated during that chain. And I've just put a list on the screen there so that you can see how to get each one. As you move down that list on the screen of concurrences, you'll note that each one does substantially more damage than the last, with the most lucrative being the black hole concurrence. However, that one's a little bit tricky to activate, seeing as how you need to have activated four of each level of quickening ability during the chain. So that's quite a lot actually. And I have done a video on how to get that concurrence, how to get that trophy, which requires you to activate each concurrence at least one time. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. And here we go then guys, that's the end of my chain. So we managed to get Arc Blast, which means that we've done the level one, level two, and level three quickenings at least two times each during that particular chain. There we have it then guys. One dead enemy. And trust me, you get good at quickenings and get some high chains, you'll be killing a lot of stuff with them. Alright folks, well I hope this video has helped you. Don't forget to check out my complete walkthrough for Final Fantasy XII containing over 200 plus videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if it's helped you out. And don't forget to share any thoughts you have on quickenings with your fellow gamers in the comments section. And if you might be able to help them out, that would be a bonus as well. Take care everybody, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.